Hey, this is Zengo MD back again with a look at food labeling. You know, we've all gotten pretty good at reading food labels and calorie counts are everywhere. You know, they're even on restaurant menus. Yet we're fatter as a society than ever. Yet walk down any aisle of processed food in the grocery store and you're more likely than ever going to see people turning around the protein powder canisters or the boxes of crackers to compare the nutrition facts between one and a competing product. Well, if you want to lose weight, the first thing you need to realize is that a food label is not a legal document. It has become an advertising tool, and let's find out why. Look, the FDA is overworked. I mean, they've got vaping and fentanyl to deal with, so food labels are not exactly high on the list. So this ingredient list is really on the honor system. The food manufacturer is supposed to list everything that's in the food and put it on the label for the consumer, but there is no mandatory third party to check it. And by the way, do you know what this ingredient list is for? It's actually for a Beyond Meat Burger. Well, there are other things that the FDA and other government bodies enforce. Claims using regulated terms on the label outside of the ingredient or nutrition facts list. Terms like organic, low fat, low sodium, healthy and natural all have strict definitions and you can get dinged if you use them wrong, but those are typically on the front of the package in bold letters. And the FDA will really get on you if you have an ingredient inside your food that could potentially cause a food allergy like nuts, but it's missing from the ingredient list. So yeah, you misuse these terms or cause a person with a peanut allergy to have a reaction to your product, but what happens if you mess with your ingredient list a little that doesn't involve an allergenic food? What happens when you misrepresent the calories or the grams of carbs, protein, or fiber on a food label? Oh, would a food manufacturer actually do that? Well, we don't really know because it's very hard to find cases. See, nobody really gets hurt if there's three grams of fiber in your food instead of six grams or 270 calories instead of 240. And it's pretty hard to prove that you got hurt by that. So just get the label format right, and you're probably fine as long as the numbers are in the ballpark and believable. Again, it's the honor system. And now the FDA is focused on adding calorie counts to restaurant menus too. Again, honor system. Before now, did you think that the FDA had some kind of lab where it secretly tests the numbers on these nutrition labels with big fines and maybe jail time when processed food manufacturers get it wrong? Do you think that each food company hires some independent third party to test their labels? The answer to both is a resounding no. The numbers on that label are entirely under the honor system. They don't have to be verified or checked by anyone. Just because processed food companies and restaurants can put anything they want on a nutrition facts label or a calorie count doesn't mean that they do, although the limited literature available on the subject seems to agree that there is a bit of fudging going on with the data. In this study, both frozen foods and meals at restaurants both understated their calories. The restaurants by 18%, the frozen meals by 8%. And some restaurant items were more than double the stated calories, and many did not include the side dishes in the calorie count. And this jives with long-term research done that shows that the more meals you have in a restaurant, the fatter you tend to get. And the more manufactured, processed dinners you eat, the fatter you get. Well, let's take the best case scenario of that 8% calorie overstatement in the frozen foods tested. So let's say you're aiming to eat 2,000 calories and you unknowingly consume 8% more. That is a daily overconsumption of 160 calories. Doesn't seem like a big deal, right? 8%? Now, all things being equal, and assuming you don't go out and exercise harder to combat the calories that you never know you ate to begin with, then that becomes 58,400 excess calories per year. At the standard conversion rate of 3,500 calories per pound of fat, you would gain 16.8 pounds each year due to this innocent little 8% overestimation. Here's another study that tested restaurant food showing that 19% of items had significantly more calories than tested. A New York Times article from a few years ago confirmed the same thing in a few fast food items like burritos. Well, which processed food category fares the best? Actually, snack and convenience foods only exceed the calories on the label by about 4%, and that is mostly in the carbohydrate gram estimate, which really is makes up the entire majority of these foods. For some hard candies, it's everything. Still, the one nutrition facts label that people read the least, snack foods, are the ones that fare the best in these limited number of studies. 
Maybe because the processed food makers know that you're really not going to look at them, so why fudge it? Because you're not going to buy one candy because it's got less calories than the other. Are any of these findings going to put anyone in jail? Nah. The FDA expects around a 20% error in stated calorie and nutrition numbers. So how accurate do you expect these breakdowns of carbs, fiber, sugar, and proteins to be? I see many people turn around boxes and compare different brands based on these labels. And I'm sure the one with an extra gram of fiber or an extra gram of protein or a few grams less of sugar is more likely to get bought. So this is especially true for hyper-competitive items like protein powders and meal replacement bars, where there is a rush to have the most protein and fiber without sacrificing taste. Just don't put peanuts in the box and leave them off the label and you'll probably stay under the radar. So the next time you buy a processed food based on the label, remember this. If it tastes too good to be true, it probably is. And like our title states, you need to look at a food label as an advertising tool, not a legal document. And finally, you should expect carbs and calories to be understated on the label, while protein and fiber are often overstated since those will help sell more product. In fact, no study I'm aware of shows that any calorie count of a processed food is more likely to overestimate the calories in the food. It just doesn't happen. It's kind of strange for that to be a coincidence, don't you think? Or are the processed food makers slowly, intentionally trying to mislead with their own nutrition facts label? getting away with it a little bit more each time. Or why not just avoid all manufactured processed foods in the first place? Then you don't have to worry about any of this. I mean, if the labels are all potentially wrong and you eat 10 manufactured processed foods and they could have an error each of 10%, then you're just multiplying the error on top of each other. And that's frustrating. Seriously think about going a day or longer without eating anything that has a nutrition facts label. I bet you'll feel fuller on fewer calories and carb grams, and you will also begin to erase your food addiction pathways at the same time. So now you see another reason why we don't recommend manufactured processed foods. So for more tips and tricks on how you can eat better and lose weight, subscribe here and follow us on these other platforms. Until next time, goodbye.